So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we are back with another off-season rebuild, and today it's going to be the Portland Trailblazers. At the time I am recording this, the Trailblazers are 1-9 in their last 10 games. They are 20-56 and 56 throughout the course of this regular season so far. Clearly, this season for Portland is and was never meant to be a competitive contending season in a very good Western Conference. So, they made the big trade last off-season with Damian Lillard sending him to Milwaukee. This team does still have some decent veteran pieces in place. Definitely have some young talent, but there is a lot of work to do here today in three seasons to turn this team into a true contender. As always, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section. I've been having an absolute blast with these off-season rebuilds so far. I think this is actually our fourth episode of the off-season rebuild series. Clearly, we're only still doing teams that have been yet to be eliminated from playoff contention. So if there's any teams that fit that criteria that I haven't done, let me know which one you want to see down below in the comment section. Of course, with anything else you guys really are inclining to see. Yeah, man, this team needs some work, but I think there is a really good foundation set here. Let's get into it. Before we go ahead and start our first offseason here of this rebuild, we're going to go ahead and have a quick conversation about this roster right now. As I mentioned, there's some good young pieces here. There's some good veteran talent. Let's go ahead and talk about it and kind of lay out my plans, if you will. So Malcolm Brogdon was a piece of the Drew Holiday trade with the Celtics, as I'm sure many of you know, Drew Holiday came over in the Damian Lillard trade, and they uh, obviously didn't really want to hang on to Drew Holiday. That didn't make a lot of sense. So Brogdon came over. Definitely going to be somebody I consider maybe moving on from this offseason. He's not going to start at the point guard spot for me, and if there's better value out there, I'll probably take advantage of it. Scoot Henderson, third overall pick in last year's draft, has definitely had an up, up and down rookie campaign, like most young point guards do. Um, um, for me, he's still kind of a building block for us, maybe future face of the franchise. Definitely not giving up on the man after one rookie season. So I'm very excited to see what he can do for us here today. Shooting guard spot, Anthony Simons, probably one of, if not the best player on this team. He's an 83 overall. He's on a long-term contract, which of course is very nice, but only 25 years old, still relatively young. Hopefully that progression can continue to go super well. I'm big on Shaden Sharp. I have been. I know he's been battling some injuries this season. He's only 21. He's already an 80 overall. I definitely want to get him starting minutes whether that's at the small forward spot, shooting guard, whatever it's going to be, I'm going to figure it out. Uh, Delano Bantons here has actually had some really good games for the Trailblazers since he came over at the deadline in a deal with the Celtics. Um, again, here in 2K especially, I don't know how much value he's actually going to have for us. He's an expired contract, but... Well, good for Delano Banton. I was happy to see him get some real playing time. Uh, Rayan Rupert, Rayan, Rayan, again, terrible with names, but only 20 years old, 69 overall. I don't know if there's much to work with there. Uh, small forward spot, Jeremy Grant was a guy they brought back last offseason. I'm assuming that move was to maybe try to convince Damian Lillard they're still trying to build around him because they re-signed him prior to the Damian Lillard trade. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't have a problem with Jeremy Grant. I just don't know if he's a reliable, you know, third, second option on a championship caliber team, and he's definitely getting paid like one. So we'll see. Um, is he thiable here? Good defensive player, not a ton offensively, but decent player overall. Chris Murray's here. Again, if you can maybe develop a little bit, could be a rotation piece. Power forward spot, probably neither of our long-term answers are going to be here with Jabari Walker or Tumani Kamara. They're definitely good rotation pieces, good age, good overalls, but there's really not a lot there in terms of star power. And then the center spot's very interesting for me because DeAndre Ayton came over in a trade with the Phoenix Suns, He's the highest overall player on this team right now. Actually been playing pretty well as of recently. And uh, for me, I just, I don't know. Because DeAndre Ayton, former number one overall pick on a max contract. You know, you like to think that he could be a really good player for you. Here in 2K, we'll find out. Uh, I love Robert Williams. I was very sad to see my Celtics trade him. Uh, he has some, and still does, has some injury problems. But here in 2K, we don't play with those on. So we're going to get a fully healthy Rob Will today. Duop Reith is here. Definitely a good depth piece for us at 28 years old. And then Moses Brown, who has one of the craziest free throw shooting forms I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Probably not going to be a big piece. All right, let's get into it. We're going to override LeBron's retirement as we always do. Staff retirements, cool Hall of Fame inductees, jersey retirements. Kyle Lowry, probably a Hall of Famer. All right, let's get into it. A very, very big moment for us here in the draft lottery. It says the Bulls have our pick. I'm pretty sure it's protected. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that once we're done with this. And we are going to end up with the sixth overall pick. So it looked like we fell about four, or excuse me, two, three spots, whatever it was. A little bit unfortunate, but I can live with it. That sixth overall pick definitely can get me a good player. I'm a fan of Chauncey Billups. I don't think he's one of the elite head coaches in basketball, but here has some pretty good ratings. I love the look at that potential four and a half out of five stars, and he didn't have a lot to work with last season, let's be honest with each other. So I'm going to hang on to Chauncey for now. Not to say he's set in stone the entire video, but he's a good option, probably about as good as we're going to get for now. Sixth overall pick, we have the 14th overall pick from the Warriors. That pick actually came from the Celtics in the Drew Holiday trade. And then two early second round picks. We're definitely not going to use all of these, so we might have a trade. If not, we'll see you guys in the draft. I've decided we're going to keep both of our first round picks. Probably makes the most logical sense. And we're just going to get rid of both of our second round picks. 
some years and some teams, I'll probably keep them, especially this high, and use them. Today's video is not going to be one of those cases. So I have a target in mind with this sixth overall selection. I'm hoping he does fuck. God damn it. This was I wanted Matos Buzelas. Because out of everybody who we could have possibly taken here, he's like the one, maybe, I guess, true power forward. Who even knows what a power forward technically is in today's NBA. But uh, I wanted him, and the Detroit Pistons took him from me. So I am going to try to find a way... See if the Pistons want to entertain a conversation and maybe just go ahead. Ooh, is that Jonathan Kaminga? Um, Pistons, Pist... Whoa. I might have to consider that. Now, the Pistons will let me have him for the sixth overall pick in Matisse Stiebel, but honestly, I almost am more enticed to just make this trade here with the Houston Rockets because I have absolutely no idea why they'd even be interested in making this deal, and I fully understand that our center position is basically filled out. But in my opinion, anyway, Shingun is leaps and bounds ahead of guys like DeAndre Ayton and Robert Williams, as much as I love Rob Will. It's just a fact at this point. So Shingun, still only 21 years old. I feel like the sky's the limit. I feel like I have to take this trade. Now, it does suck to get rid of a really good defensive player, my Matisse Thibel, but he will be an expiring deal. He's already 27. I think I've made worse trades. I'm going to make this one as well. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Very, very big surprise kind of blockbuster deal I didn't necessarily see coming. It almost feels like in some ways, and I don't know, for those of you who like actually play this game religiously, let me know if you actually agree with this. Does it seem like sometimes when you're actually in the draft, not prior to the draft, not after the draft, if I'm in the draft like I am right now and I throw up, say, the sixth overall pick, do you get better offers than what you would have just like prior to simming up to the draft? I feel like that kind of is the case. Um, let's see who has gone outside of him. So they take Collier. Interesting draft pick. Still some good names here. Kyle Filipowski, Carlton Carrington, uh, Robert Dillingham out of Duke, right? No, Kentucky. Fuck. I always get the blue bloods mixed up. Probably feels like the right pick. Decent backup point guard death. I see Donovan Klingon out of UConn here as well, but I think at this point we just have enough centers on this team. Reed Shepard out of Kentucky also here. Who do I prefer? Which Kentucky product? I definitely have a lot of shooting guards here as well. I think Dillingham's going to be my guy. Welcome to the team. And then, wait, what other pick do I have? Oh, I got a second round pick out of that trade. Um, You know what? Fuck it. We'll just draft somebody in the second round. I guess whatever. Ooh, Dalton Connect's sitting here. What the hell? Okay, Dalton Connect out of Tennessee, who's probably one of the better players in college basketball, actually. 73 overall. Welcome to the team. All right, team player options. Sharp and Banton, who actually didn't know how to team option. Interesting, but he'll bring him back. Why not? Um, and now what it's going to come down to is just deciding what we want to do with this team. We're in an interesting spot because although... You know, we are a rebuilding team, and typically rebuilding teams tend to try to leave open some cap space. You know, we don't really have cap space. We have a lot of veterans on this team making decent amount of money, so that's not going to really be how we go about this rebuild today because we do have some bigger contracts. What we're going to do right now is figure out what we want to do with DeAndre Aiden and or Robert Williams. Uh, I definitely don't really need both of them, maybe not either of them because we just made the big blockbuster for Shingu. So let's find a trade. We're going to talk to the New York Knicks and see if they have any little bit of interest in potentially trading me Julius Randall. The power forward spot's kind of a position of need for me right now. I fully understand we have Jeremy Grant, who in the year 2024 can definitely play the power forward spot in the NBA, but I'm not super high on Jeremy Grant or his contract. So, how about we try to make a trade with New York, get a really good power forward, an all-NBA level guy, and this is an interesting proposition here. Mitchell Robinson they want to give me in this deal? You see, I feel like Mitchell Robinson and Robert Williams like aren't crazy far off in terms of like backup center talent. They're both very good backup center options, and Mitchell Robinson and Robert Williams are probably both decent starting center options. But ultimately, I don't really know if I love this. I'd rather have him hang on to Jabari Walker. So I don't really need Mitchell Robinson. There are definitely some other players here. Like if you honestly just want Delano Banton, you can probably have him. You think he makes a little bit too much money. I don't want to give up Duop Reith that he's actually, you know what? I probably will. I don't really need, respectfully, I don't really need to operate. So you know what? We'll hang on to Rob Will. He's not making a ton of money anyway, so he'll be the backup here behind Shingun. We just went ahead and made the trade for Randall Kamara. I'm actually going to let the guy play. Still only 24. Small forward's interesting. I moved Shaden Sharp, as you can clearly tell. I want to start him. I want to get him as many minutes as possible. It makes the most sense to me. Now, do I want to keep Jeremy Grant, have him off the bench for me? I, I don't know. It's so weird to me. Um, and then, honestly, I want to get Dalton Connect some run. I really do think he could be a good, valuable NBA player. I've seen some mock drafts having him going all the way in, like, the top 10, which is a little bit insane. But uh, nonetheless, I wouldn't mind having him be the actual backup behind Simons. I know Delano Banton played well in the limited games he did have with Toronto. Or Toronto. With Portland. But it just doesn't make a lot of sense for me. And then 
Malcolm Brogdon, same thing here with him and Dillingham. So again, I don't necessarily think it's the best idea to just clear out every single veteran we have here, but if I can get some sort of draft pick for any of these guys, I'm probably going to take it. There's just not a lot of need for me to have some of these players here. I can get Walker Kessler like that. It's insane. Um, like this is a deal with the Lakers that I don't love, but it gets me a draft pick. It gets me a young tradable asset in Jalen Hood, Shafino, that probably not going to be able to get in many other places. So I just don't know. Troy Brown Jr., I think I'd rather have Jalen that draft pick. Actually, is that a first from Detroit? That is first from Detroit. All right, you know what? I don't know why Detroit wants Brogdon, but that draft pick's valuable. All right, so same thing with Delano Benton. I want to get connect some minutes. I think it makes more sense for us here. I'll do this trade here with the Bulls. Julian Phillips, multi-year deal, can be an asset for us at some point in time. Uh, Rupert, again, he has the team here. I'll hang on to him. He's not going to play. And then Jeremy Grant is just is an interesting one for me because the contract is not really like... It, it is tradable here in 2K. It's probably not really tradable in real life. I just don't really know who's going to want to take on this kind of money. So if anybody wants... Ooh, like Jed Howard. Like, do I just take that? Maybe even get Jed Howard a little bit of run this year? Whoa. I get Case and Wallace like that. Fuck, I don't need Case and Wallace. I just drafted Robert Dillingham. Both Kentucky products, by the way, correct? Yeah, I just... Mm, I don't need him. But I like this is insane, the fact that this is even an offer. Oh, man, I feel like I'm going to kick myself in the balls if I don't make that trade for Wallace. But, like, it also just doesn't make a ton of sense. Jed Howard. People are going to kill me if I don't make this trade for Casey Wallace, aren't they? <sighs> I'm going to do it. It feels stupid. It feels stupid if I don't do it. I fully understand that Robert Dillingham, we just drafted him 14th overall. But it just it wouldn't make a lot of sense. I mean, can I play Casey Wallace at the 2? What happens to his overall? I know I just said I wanted to play Dalton Connect. But uh, I might have lied to you. Case when Wallace goes up, you know what? We're going to play them both. Why the hell not? All right. So uh, not a trade I necessarily was expecting to make, but one that I am kind of happy that I made. Actually, how tall? Hang on with a second. How tall? He's 6'6". Six, six. Could I play connect at the backup three? And again, I know this is taking forever. He actually goes up to a 75 overall. You know what? Dalton Connect. Going to get some backup small forward minutes for us this year. That works out very well, doesn't it? Um, all right, what's the contract situation with the rest of the backups? Keegan, Mur Keegan Murray. Chris Murray still has a two-year team option. I really do not need Troy Brown Jr., so thank you very much, Philadelphia. And then what are the other backups? We're good here, and we're good here. All right, very, very interesting first offseason for us here in Portland. It feels like we almost ripped it down a little bit just so we could build it back up. Uh, and by the way, I will read you this because 2K is incredibly stupid. If a pick doesn't convey, I fully understand the Bulls have our pick. It was just top 14 protected. And I'll just read this to you right now. Portland's first round pick to Chicago protected for selections 1 through 14 in 2024. It fell to 6, meaning we still get it. Uh, it is 1 through 14 in 25. It is 1 through 14 in 26. 1 through 14 in 27. And 1 through 14 in 28. So unless it is outside of those numbers, if it is 15 or lower, we're getting the draft pick back. It just turns into two seconds past 2028. And of course, we're never going to get to that point. So we're probably going to get to take our first round pick back next year. Let's set the rotation. It is officially the start of year one for us here in Portland. This offseason was very eventful. We traded away pretty much every single veteran we had on this team. We added some really nice pieces in our front court. We improved the bench unit. This team overall is just really trending in the correct direction, which is, of course, my kind of big goal of the first offseason. Scoot Henderson, Anthony Simons, Shaden Sharp, Julius Randle, Alperin, Shengun. My one through five, probably not a lot of surprises there. Casey Wallace is up to an 81 overall. I am very happy I made that trade. I mean, Jed Howard in the draft pick probably would have been fine, but Cason Wallace not taking that would have just been idiotic. I think he's actually already the same, if not a higher overall, than what Jeremy Grant was, and he's making a fraction of the money. Robert Williams is going to be my backup center as my seventh man. You got Robert Dillingham in here as my backup point guard. Simone Kamara, the backup four. Dalton Connect, tenth and final guy, playing ten minutes a night as my backup small forward. So, um, again, I don't know if this team's going to be super competitive this year. Maybe we go out on a limb, end up clinching a playing spot, but we have our first round pick. Worst comes to worst, but really Really, really excited about what this team can be. I'll see you guys at the end of year one. Year one here in Portland is officially over. We ended up with a record of 34 and 48. Although it isn't great, it is definitely trending in the right direction, which, as I just mentioned, was our goal this entire time for year one. Luka Doncic is your MVP, a 29 point. I almost said triple-double. Not quite. He was pretty damn close. Alexander Saar, your Rookie of the Year. CP3, six man. Wembenyama, your deep boy. Jaden Hardy, most improved. Luka Clutch Player of the Year. Jason Kidd. All right. Never thought I'd see the day Jason Kidd wins a Coach of the Year. Um, we are not going to be in the play-in. I think that is a safe assumption at our record. We are the 13th seed here in the Western Conference. Looks like we had about the sixth worst overall record in the league. So uh, when you kind of look at it that way, it's not good. But when you look at it from the perspective of where this team was at last season to where we are at now, 
I'm definitely comfortable enough saying this was a really good season overall for what we were hoping for. Um, we are going to have our draft pick, which is, of course, what we were looking for. I'll make sure I get it back from the Chicago Bulls. I fully understand this game is so stupid with the way they do things. It is a Nuggets and a Sixers finals. It would be awesome to see these two go up against each other in a seven-game series. That would require the Sixers getting out of the second round, though. Nuggets go on to win it all. That would be technically their second in three years. Nikola Jokic, second career finals. MVP. Did he ever? I'm sorry. I think he saw he averaged 48% from beyond the arc. That's insane. Okay. Offseason number two. Can't override LeBron's retirement again. I wish I could. We are going to take a look at what we got here in terms of options with this team. Draft lottery is going to be very important. I'll make sure I take the pick back. It's actually projected at number eight right now. And where's it going to fall? Oh, I saw Bulls one. I was like, did we just get the first overall pick? No, they, it's their own pick. We do have ours at number eight, though. So I will try to do my best. Not do my try. I will do my best in getting this draft pick back very swiftly, very easily. We're going to give Chauncey one more year. We'll let him write out his contract. You know, if we make significant improvements, another year of development, maybe a few additions to the team, and we still suck, then I'll probably look for somebody new. But one more year for Chauncey is cool with me. Let's head up to the draft. I'll get my pick back. We'll go from there. I'll just show you guys here real quick how I did it. I mean, it's not exactly rocket science, but this was the trade. I basically sent them my next year's first round pick, lottery protected. Just adds another year of insurance, I guess. I don't even, I'm not even going to call it insurance. It's exactly what actually should be going on in this game. Then I just took our first round pick this year back. All right, so eighth overall pick is definitely not nothing. Um, there are definitely some deciding factors on what I want to do with this draft pick because although we have a really good team, an eighth overall pick would definitely help, but I just don't know where we're going to slide that guy in. You know, I'm very comfortable with our 10-man rotation right now. So in some ways, I feel like trading the pick might benefit us a little bit more, but I also don't really want to trade anybody. So that's kind of a position I'm in that's a little tricky right now. I guess I'll just draft somebody and maybe we'll trade them after. But again, I'm very happy and you know very content with the 10-man rotation we had. Again, I think, think one more year of development would really help them out. So you know what? I'll draft somebody at number eight. They're probably not going to play a lot. I see Dylan Harper here. He's B minus, so highest overall ranked prospect on the board. I'm not going to pretend I know much about really anything else there, so I'm going to take him. Uh, and then our second round pick, not really going to be used today. So, um, I mean, maybe they kind of force my hand early in a situation like this to pull the trigger on a different trade. I don't necessarily want to, but Harper's a 79 overall. And uh, everybody coming back, Julius Randle is entering free agency. Got to make sure I re-sign him because he's a big point or a big point person for this team for us. Same with Shen Goon. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. I know we have two big free agents. Shen Goon has five offers. None of them are actually real. Let's offer him a contract. Let's do the same for Randall. Bing, bang, boom. We get them both back. And we actually have a $24 million trade exception here with Jeremy Grant. So I definitely want to make sure we use that if we have the option to do so. So, uh... Yeah, you know, there's some really good players here. We just were never going to have the money. So I guess it's time to maybe make a decision what we want to do. Oh, oh, my God. We just added Anthony Edwards to this team. Oh, my God. I did not think or have any idea how that was humanly possible. But Anthony Edwards is now the best player on this team. A beautiful new addition for one of the best young players in the league. Why the Minnesota Timberwolves wanted to trade him, I have absolutely no idea. But nonetheless, I am super excited about what we just did with this team. I'm going to move Cason Wallace back to the point guard spot. His overall is going to take a one overall hit. But he'll be the new backup behind Scoot Henderson. It's going to go ahead and allow Dylan Harper now get some minutes behind Anthony Edwards, our new superstar that we just traded for. So, you know, although our record wasn't great in the first season, you know, we knew we were trending in the right direction. Ultimately, I did not think an Anthony Edwards trade was going to be possible. I was kind of just fucking around and the thing went through and I was like, you know what? Why not? Um, at this point in time, we do need to find ourselves a new backup power forward. I did trade Kamara in that deal in order to land at Ant. And uh, other than that, we're pretty much all set. So let's just see in terms of any other free agents here. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple names here. Like Aaron Wiggins could be a fun idea to bring him in. I see a Chaya Baje is here at the power forward spot. Is he really a four? Um, but I think a more logical and kind of... A more ideal idea would be to maybe move like Rupert and maybe Chris Murray with him as well. Maybe could even move Murray to the backup uh, four. But we're just going to do this, see what's on the market for us here, see if we can find a decent backup four. I see Omax. Ooh, Bull Bull could be exciting. Not a guy I land a lot on these. I could also just get Kamara right back. But you know what? Let's spice it up a little bit. Let's pick up some Bull Bull, a fan favorite. So yeah, you know, this team kind of just completely flipped a script in one offseason. Again, wasn't necessarily expecting it, but... The Anthony Edwards trade came, and I'm certainly not going to be upset about it. So I'll see you guys at the start of year two.
I have a sneaky feeling we're not going to actually get our draft pick back from the Chicago Bulls this year, and that is more than fine by me, because this team went from a team that was sub-40 wins, although really looking good for the future, to a team that can definitely be contending right now this season. It's championship time, man. I really do feel confident about that. Scoot Henderson, Anthony Edwards, Shaden Sharp, Julius Randle, and Alperin Shengun are 1-5. through five. Really not a 1-5 through five that I expected to be anywhere close to year two for what this I thought this was going to look like, but I will certainly take it. Cason Wallace is going to be my sixth man off the bench. you got Rob Will behind him, Dylan Harper, who we just went ahead and drafted eighth overall, going to be a rookie player for us, getting decent amount of minutes off the bench. Hopefully he can go ahead and take advantage of an opportunity. Bull Bull, who we just picked up in a trade, and then Dalton Connect rounding out this 10-man rotation. This is a team that, you know, I didn't really, as I just mentioned, think was going to be ready to win now, but you know what? We are here. We are ready to go. Let's take a look at Anthony Edwards in that Portland Trailblazers jersey, man. It's just, oh, it's a thing of beauty. Let's get into it. I'll see you guys at the end of year number two. Year two ends, we finished with a record of 55 and 27. It's not 60 plus wins, which I was kind of hoping for before this year kicked off, but it is definitely a much better record than we had last year, and uh, we should be contending in a very good Western Conference. Luka Doncic, another MVP. It is a triple-double this time. Cooper Flags, your Rookie of the Year. Ace Bailey, Sixth Man of the Year in New York. Wemby is yet another <laughs> Defensive Player of the Year. Taylor Hendricks, Most Improved. Cool to see him get a bigger opportunity in Milwaukee. He's your Most Improved Player. Trey Young, Clutch Player of the Year. Mark Dagnall. Head coach of the OKC Thunder takes home that coach of the year. So we are a three seed. I just saw it right there in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, we were very much in the mix. I'm just, ooh, you don't see the Grizzlies up here too often. I will say this. The Memphis Grizzlies have already had, already, I mean, obviously, have obviously had a very, very tough season this year in real life. You know, the John Morant suspension comes back for like, what, a couple of games. Gets re-injured, is out for the entire year. I know Bain's been having some injury problems. I mean, that entire goddamn roster is going to be having some injury problems. Smart's been out. Triple J. Um, but for me, you know, they're going to get a pretty good pick in this year's draft. And although it's not the greatest draft class of all time, when all of this talent inevitably comes back next year, maybe they go out and get a really good defensive center, a.k.a. somebody like a Nick Claxton. This team could be really good next year. I'm just saying, watch out for the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I'm just saying. Here's a look at the East. Um, let's check out some stats on the year. See how everybody played for us. In terms of points per game, it was Mr. Anthony Edwards, Shaden Sharp, Randall, Shingoon, Henderson, Harper, Connect, Bull, Wallace, and Rob Will. Rebounds for game is going to be Shingoon and assists also Mr. Alper and Shingoon. So we've got a first round matchup here with the Denver Nuggets. Jokic versus baby Jokic going up here in the first round of the Western Conference playoffs. Uh, no longer have Jamal Murray. They have added Malik Monk to their team, though. You got Miles McBride here in the starting lineup. Not bad. Pretty good Denver Nuggets team still. So they actually win game one. We do tie it up at 1 1, take a 2 1 lead. Back at even for a best of three, we go down and we get eliminated in round one. Not the way I thought this was going to go. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought it was at least a Western Conference Finals trip for us at worst. That was not the case. And now we're going to be left with some pretty big... What the fuck? Some pretty big decisions entering our final season. Pacers go on to win it all, and they still gave Luka a finals MVP. I mean, honestly, with those numbers, I don't know how the Mavericks didn't win anyways. All right, man, it is time for our final offseason of this rebuild. Um, we have, as I just mentioned, some really big choices to make, both with the coaching personnel, the decision-making about this roster. Going to be a decently high shit show, if I had to guess. Um, I don't know. I think we traded the Timberwolves that Detroit pick. I don't think we traded them a Utah pick. So, not that I wouldn't anyways trade the fifth overall pick for Anthony Edwards or wherever the hell it landed. But, nonetheless, you get my point. We're not going to have any high picks. Um, all right, staff signing. So, Chauncey Billups' contract expired. Guy like Nick Nurse is here. He's definitely a solid option. Quinn Snyder. Jacob Underwood's a guy I've gotten from time to time. I see Mike Malone here, a championship caliber head coach. So, you know what? I'm going to make offers... I think it would be dumb not to make an offer to both Nurse and Malone. I think Malone would definitely be my number one right now. And then I'm going to make an offer to Nurse. I do see as one other offer. And then my last resort would probably be Quinn Snyder. I don't love the idea of Quinn Snyder, but I can get behind it. Um, so we're going to decline this. Malone's not going to come in. But Nick Nurse is definitely an upgrade, I would say, over Chauncey Billups. Championship caliber head coach, as you already all know. All right, up to the draft. Do we have any other picks? Do we? We do have two second round picks. All right. Neither of these are valuable. Thank you very much, Cleveland. Um, all right. So skipping over the draft for the first time of this video, team player options. We're going to bring back everybody here. And now we will enter free agency. It looks like Dalton Connect. He was only a uh, second round pick. So he's entering free agency. And then Shaden Sharp are both going to be restricted free agents here for us. Do we have any unrestricted free agents? Uh, we have Robert Williams. He's definitely a guy I want to get back. And then Sharp has no real offers. So we're just going to pay him while wow, he wants a 
Pretty penny, that's for sure. Um, all right, I'm going to wait on Connect. Bull Bull definitely could be a guy I look to replace. Not that he was bad or anything. I just don't know if we're actually going to be able to bring him back. So uh, I can wait on Connect because I can match whatever he gets. Power forward options, you know what? I guess I'll maybe just bring back Bull Bull. All right, maybe. I don't know. Um, okay, so we'll wait on Connect. In terms of like any other major upgrades, I mean, I don't... I really don't think that this team really needs an upgrade anywhere, right? I mean, am I crazy for thinking that this is a championship caliber team? I don't really think I am. So, you know, I might run it back with this same exact team, just bringing obviously a new head coach, just saw what we did with Nick Nurse. But, you know, I mean, unless it's like maybe Scoot Henderson, who again has been kind of playing well in the role he's in on this team, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to trade him. I know that overall is going to do nothing but go up in terms of the money he's making. I don't know if we're going to get a player that that much better than him. I mean, I will explore just because I'm curious. But again, unless it's like somebody who is best of the best, which again, making the money Henderson does is probably not going to be a lot of options here. I don't really see a real path to trade him. Not that I even want to. I see a man Thompson here. Doesn't really make a lot of sense for this team. So, nope, we're hanging on to Henderson as I kind of wanted to do the entire time. We're going to wait uh, for Dalton Connect to sign a contract or just accept his qualifying. And I'll see you guys at the start of the final regular season. I think it is safe to say that this team is officially championship or bust. We're seeing a lot of positive progression out of almost everybody on this team, honestly. We are deep as hell. A very, very good head coach in Nick Nurse. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've had no playoff success so far. So it's now or never in the final regular season. Scoot Henderson, Anthony Edwards, Shaden Sharp, Julius Randle, Opera, and Shingun, my one through five. I mean, there's no changes on this team whatsoever. Dylan Harper has developed up to an 83 overall. I want to get the most out of him in only his second season. So he will be taking over as the sixth man at that 83 overall off the bench. Case and Walls as our seventh man. Robert Williams bumps down one in the rotation. That's fine by me. Got Dalton Connect, who actually accepted his qualifying offer, and then Bull Bull rounding out this 10 man rotation under new head coach Nick Nurse. So, um, again, I, th I think similar to last year, all the pieces were here. I'm hoping all it is is a change in head coach and another year of development that gets it done because that's what I'm banking on right now. See you guys at the end of the final regular season. It is yet another MVP for Luka Doncic. More importantly, we go 67 and 15. Obviously, by far our best regular season record yet. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping for a lot of postseason success because that is something that has not happened yet. Cameron Boozer, is your rookie of the year. He is a Washington Wizard. Nicole Toppin, six man of the year in Utah. Wemby, let's just rename the award at this point. Kyle Boswell, most improved. Jalen Brown, clutch player. Okay. I love me some JB, but okay. Uh, and coach of the year is Mr. Nick Nurse. So first year head coach for us, takes home coach of the year honors. We are the one seed here in the West, as you saw right there. We were eight games up on the two seed Dallas Mavericks. And uh, yeah, best record in the league. So let's see if we can get it done. Uh, you know, I think again, I stand by my statement. We clearly have the talent here to get this done. It's just whether everything's going to click at the right moments. And uh, maybe we don't run into Nikola Jokic. So hopefully that's not the case. Houston Rockets here in round one. Isaiah Collier, Men Thompson, Cody Williams. Is Jalen Green coming off the bench? What? Okay. Can't fix stupid. I learned it a long time ago. Um, all right. We are up to nothing. Make it three nothing. And that is okay. Not a clean sweep, but that is a win in five. Thunder are always such a pain in the ass. I'm sure many of you know SGA is one of the best players in the world. Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, Shed Holmgren. So uh, this team is very good, although they haven't made a ton of new additions from outside their current core right now. There's clearly a lot of development here. Take notes, Josh Giddy, And they are still very good. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here in the Western Conference semifinals. We drop game one. Tie it up at 1-1 till up to 1. Okay, 3-2 lead, and thank God. All right, us and the Memphis Grizzlies, the team that I was hyping up only a year ago. They've added Chris Middleton. Jalen Duran is a nice addition. you got Jacoby Walter, Emmanuel Quickly, Gigi Jackson off the bench. God damn, that team is talented. Okay, let's see. Can we fight off the fine harding fighting Grizzlies? I don't know what word I was trying to say there. I was trying to say, like, fine harding No, I was trying to say... Hard fighting, that's what I was looking for. All right, well, let's not blow a big lead, thank you. Uh, they still give John Morant Conference Finals MVP, that's fine. All right, us and the Chicago Bulls, not a team you see a lot here. Kobe White, Zach Levine, Holland, Cooper Flag, Miles Turner, basically an entirely, I don't want to say entirely new look Bulls team, but um, there's a lot of new talent here, and there's a reason they are going to be and still are very good, and we're up 3-0, and that is a clean sweep. Anthony Edwards Finals MVP. All right. This was a Trailblazers offseason rebuild, not necessarily the way I thought it was going to go. I hadn't, like, when I was like, I always do this before I kick off a video. Like, I try to plan out, you know, what I want to happen throughout the video in my head that would, you know, in turn make it a good and successful video. Um, Anthony Edwards, like, a trade for him was not really on the table. Um, I kind of lucked into that one. I don't know why the Timberwolves were willing to trade me one of the best young players in the league, but 
I'm going to take advantage of stupidity. So um, I'm very happy about the way this one went. One More than one championship would have been nice. But, of course, in a three-year rebuild, I can definitely live with one. And for those of you asking, yes, five-year rebuilds are coming eventually. I promise. That's it for me, man. Let me know any other video it is down below in the comment section. Hope you all have a great weekend. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.